Bum, 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 bum. Ba da da dum, bum, bum, ba dum, ba ba dum, 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 ba dum, 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 da da. Bum, 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 bum. Ba da da dum, bum, bum, ba dum, ba ba dum, dum. Hello, my friends. Good evening. <laughs> it's Monday night. And this is what we do every Monday night at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. We do this, one thing and one thing only, and that is homeopathy. My name is Joette Calabrese, for those who are new. And this is what we do on Monday nights. I give you my information that I have gleaned through the years, uh, my method of using homeopathy, but also many homeopaths use this method as well. It makes it so much easier <laughs> to use the method that I teach. But... Um, we're going to, that's what we're going to talk about tonight. And uh, for those of you who do know me, hi friends, I see you all coming in. Greetings from Wisconsin, says Cindy, and Lori says hello from South Dakota. And uh, Ariana from Susanville, California, happy Mother's Day to you all as well, my friends. Yep, we've got folks from New Zealand and Florida <laughs> And, oh, France. Oh, we've got a nice big group here. Nice group from Buffalo. And this is a Q&A tonight. Really nice. Uh, I, it's one of my favorite things to do. Um, and as you know, that we're on Facebook and Instagram and X and uh, Pinterest, etc. And so, and YouTube. And I ask you to please go there and share and subscribe on YouTube, etc. Again, I do not monetize this. This is only to get the word out about homeopathy. So <clears throat> some people, you know, ask uh, YouTubers, etc., social media, do this in order to monetize their site so that they can then get sponsors. And I don't do that. I'm, looking, I'm not looking for a sponsor. What I want is to teach you and teach as many people as I possibly can. So... Um, okay, so Carrie says, I'm going to, the first question, aconite, arnica, and ignatia are all choices for shocking or traumatic events. Besides going to the repertory, how would one differentiate between them if all three were on hand? Okay, that's aconite, arnica, and ignatia. First, I want to show you something. <clears throat> this is Robin Murphy's repertory, and this is what I teach in, from my from in my classes, um, in our academy, in many of the other classes, um, in our study groups, and to find out more where you can learn more, you can go to joettslearningcenter.com. But we're going to start with this, and because the repertory is a very good place to start, so I'm going to show you that anxiety starts on page. 17, and I'm going to tell you something. If you don't know this about repertories, it is a, um, a, a, a um, compendium of, home, of, of, met, of conditions and symptoms of all of pretty much all of human suffering that has been consolidated over the last oh, 200 some years. So it is a, and this one, Robin Murphy's, is the one that I like to use because it is so in-depth. Um, it's it's, um, it's, it's a, a, a reference book. And there are no sentences. There are no paragraphs. All it is is a category. It was called a rubric for a particular symptom or a condition. And then the medicines that have been shown, the homeopathic medicines that have been shown to be used for that particular condition either clinically or have been shown to be effective after provings. So here, we're going to start here. This is where anxiety begins. Can you see that? Can you see anxiety there? Right down here, all the way down here. All of those are medicines, homeopathic medicines specific for anxiety. That's page 17. It goes all the way to page 30. What I mean by that is there are subcategories of anxiety. So I'll read to you from, of, from uh, some of these. Anxiety for others, anxiety with palpitations, anxiety um, um, with pressure in the chest, anxiety during rest, anxiety from motion, anxiety at midnight, hysterical anxiety, 
anxiety in the head, anxiety associated with headaches, anxiety with fear. You think that would be separate. In a way, it is, right? Um, anxiety for household matters. So when you look at the first page on page 17 that I just showed you, and the, the first rubric is, has so many medicines just here. Just look at all these medicines. How do we choose? Well, that's why we go to the next page and read the rubrics and break it down so that we can find something more specific. Now, let me tell you that there are some main remedies for anxiety that we can pretty much always count on. We can always pretty much count on if it's a shock to the system and it's bam, you're fine, you're driving along, everything is fine, and then a Zamboni runs into your car and now you've got a broken leg and lacerations and <coughs> torticollis is setting in, et cetera, et cetera. One minute everything is just fine, the next minute it's a shock to the system. And we know, generally speaking, one of the best medicines for that is aconitum. Would you use arnica? Because the question was, what about arnica? Arnica is not necessarily for, it's not one of our top, it is, a, it is in there, it is useful for shock. But our first remedy we want to think about is aconitum. So, and Ignatia does not fit, because Ignatia has, has more about grief, or worry, worry on a regular basis, too much worry, uh, everything is piling up, overwhelm, et cetera, et cetera. That is different than driving along and then bam, your life is now a different life. You see where I'm coming from here? So let's go through some of the questions. Um, uh, <laughs> someone's talking about a poodle on a flight. Uh, what do we give her to either sleep through out the flight or keep her calm? Look, if you take a look, and I always urge you to do this, take advantage of my blog, my friends. Um, it's free. You'll find it every Sunday night. We post it. I've been doing it for close to 15 years, 14 years, something like that. I've never missed a Sunday night. Um, and I've written about my dog and his anxiety. And we also, we had a guest dog write about anxiety um, and uh, restlessness. And that could be what you're talking about, is a kind of restlessness. So I think it was two weeks ago. Take a look at that. So I'm not going to go through each one of these tonight. I'll just see if I can get as many as I can get in here. I have a question that I've been meaning to ask for a while. If someone is on a protocol for a chronic issue, i.e. taking prescribed remedies for several months and an acute situation presents itself like anxiety about something specific, is it all right to take a remedy for the acute or will that interfere with the long-term treatment for the chronic issue? Well, without knowing, Wanda, exactly what's going on, I'm not going to tell you what you should do, but I will tell you in general, generally speaking, it's not a problem, but it could be. Um, it's but it's general. That's what I teach in my classes. So it's something that you might want to think about in Gateway to Homeopathy in the study group. That's not actually a class. It's more of a study group. And um, um, yes, I do teach that we can use medicines simultaneously. Um, all righty. I second the hypothyroidism. I know of iodium, but would love to know more. Hypothyroid, so in other words, anxiety with hypothyroidism, right? Because there is, it is common to find anxiety associated with hypothyroidism. Then in that case, I would not start with an anxiety medicine. I would start with a hypothyroid medicine. That's where we want to start. We want to, if we already know what the etiology, what the cause is, then let's take advantage of that. And I teach that in my class called Feminopathy. But I've also taught about it on my blog. So if you look up thy, um, hypothyroidism or thyroid, you are likely to find something that could be useful. I've had plantar fasciitis. Okay, we're going to stay with anxiety and panic tonight. We're going to be talking about anxiety, panic, doom, post-traumatic stress disorder, and depression. So we're going to stay on topic. My 81-year-old mom can't sleep due to waking up and dwelling on her problems and worries. Okay, my friends. 
I've written about this medicine too, but I know many of you who have been studying with me for some time already know the medicine for this, right? You already generally, there are two main medicines. There are many, but there are two main medicines that cause Glenn, thank you very much. Glenn says the remedy is coffee. Uh, what does coffee do when we drink too much coffee? It generally doesn't keep someone from wake, from falling asleep. It generally allows them to fall asleep, and then they wake up, and their mind goes, 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 goes. Then they fall back to sleep, and they wake up, and then their mind goes, 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 goes. Coffee, says Michelle, thank you very much. Nice job, my friends. Nux Vomica is something that uh, uh, Jersey May is talking about, and I think that you've got a point there. Nux Vomica is a little more specific with anxiety, waking it around three to four in the morning. Whereas coffee is w falling asleep, waking up. Falling asleep, waking up. <laughs> Anxiety may be caused by high histamines. Any suggestions? Yes, you want to take my allergic course. I'm sorry to keep offering, you know, sending you to someplace else, but if I can give you the information, I'm going to do it. But if I know that there's another place to go, yes, you want to go Joette's um, uh, Learning Center and go to allergic because that's where the whole his, his, now we're not going, I don't teach that high histamine means anxiety, but rather histamines are associated with allergies. And then I teach how to deal with allergies so that the histamines can be softened, softened, softened over time. And then hopefully, if you're on the mark with this and you've made the right association, so will the anxiety. But let's say the anxiety does not diminish with the use of the homeopathic medicines that help uproot allergies. Then we add a remedy specific for anxiety in addition to that. Uh, panic attacks that recur, yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. Teen with depression and irritable bowel syndrome. He's been stuck, not moving back to his very active life. So much to unpack there, I realize. Yes, I know. I understand. Irritable bowel, irritable bowel syndrome, anything to do with the gut um, is, is, does not surprise me that there is anxiety associated with it or depression or fatigue um, because the gut is so keenly connected to the way we think, to the brain. So irritable bowel, I've written about it on my blog. Look up irritable bowel, see if you, what you can find. When you, when you find the remedy for irritable bowel or the protocol that I teach, go to your Materia Medica, read up on it, and make sure that, that's, that there's an association between that remedy for irritable bowel and indeed anxiety. Okay, someone just had another question. What would you give for a panic attack that recurs? Okay, you've just asked that one. Okay. The thing is, whether the panic attack is at that moment or it recurs, it's still panic attack. And last week I talked about panic attacks and one of our best medicines, we have a number of them. Again, if I look in my, in my repertory here and I look under anxiety or I look under specifically under panic attack, one of the main medicines is going to be my friends. Let's all of my students who are here, what is the main medicine for panic attacks? <laughs> While we're waiting for that to come through, I'll look at some other questions. Yes, you are right, Glenn, there you are again. And Sib and Ta, yes, aconitum. It's often aconitum. But it doesn't have, it could all, yes, thank you, Gio. It could also be, there's another one. It could be arsenicum and could be argentum nitricum. Aconite, arsenicum, argentum nitricum. Three very important remedies that are specific, all starting with the letter A. Go through your Materia Medica, read up on each one of them, and see how it fits. See how it fits. Carenza uh, uh, says aconite 200, nips it in the bud. Pat says aconite. Robin uh, Goss says aconite. Shelly from Central Wisconsin says aconite. Pamela says aconite. Yes, absolutely. You bet. Hot spots give bacterial infection remedies like, oh, okay, so this person's talking about hot spots. I, she, I think it was one of the, the dog. Argentum nitricum, yeah, also very good. Replying to Jan. Um, all right. <laughs> Whenever I teach you this, my friends, and I say, yes, aconitum. Look, everybody's coming up with the same medicine. It's one of our best medicines for panic attacks. Arsenicum, another really great for panic attacks. 
Usually if someone has one panic attack, it, it, it's, it's repetitious. It's going to happen again, more often than not, particularly if we haven't uprooted it yet. So um, I want you, whenever you look at this and consider, don't say, oh, all right, I'll just take that remedy. No, my friends, I want you to go to your Materia Medica. If you don't own one, you can go online and find them free online. Boricke, B-O-E-R-I-C-K-E, Dr. Boricke's, um, Dr. Fatak, P-H-A-T-A-K, um, is a great Materia Medica. I have a Materia Medica that you can consult. Um, you have to purchase that one. That's not free online, but these other two are. Kent, uh, uh, Dr. James Tyler Kent, is free online. You can just go there and look and read up on these medicines before one decides to use it. It's, uh, the onus is on you, my friends. Yep, arsenicum, arsenicum, arsenicum. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, argentum nitricum is great for mental issues. <clears throat> yes, you're absolutely right. Overwhelming mom with panic attacks just before bedtime as she's relaxing. Hmm, yeah, mom, it depends on, you know, here's, yeah, maybe sepia. Sepia is a great medicine for moms when they are overwhelmed, when they've just had a baby. Or they've had, you know, they now have, uh, you know, three children and they're even a little older. She, her household duties are, are paramount in her life and she's overwhelmed by them. That's the differentiation between Ignatia that feels overwhelmed and sepia that feels overwhelmed. Sepia is often a medicine for mothers, women who are overwhelmed with their household duties. Um, okay, chronic panic attacks with extreme overwhelming vertigo. That's, I, I don't know it off the top of my head, but if someone wants to look it up in here, panic with vertigo. <laughs> Ooh, I love chocolate, uh, chocolatum as, as a mom. Yes, cell salts, slow acting is not great for a panic attack. I find that too. I don't find cell salts work quickly like the way aconitum does. Argentum, nitro, arsenicum album work. They work often pretty quickly. Can you take sepia while pregnant and have a toddler? Um, we can use, sepia is a great medicine during pregnancy, but it's also a medicine that must very carefully, very judiciously be used. So yes, it may be used, but you bet I want you to know what you're doing before you take sepia during pregnancy because sepia is, is, a, is such a great medicine that it has to be quite specific during pregnancy. Um, okay, replying to Tracy. Okay, you're helping each other. Love it. Um, <laughs> we're talking about somebody who's licking, and my guess is it's the poodle. <sighs> um, all right, let's see if we can get some more questions in here. My dog has a collapsed trachea. Excitement and anxiety make the cough worse. Um, CT has no cure. I'm not sure what to give for her to calm her down. Yeah, and that's what we're talking about tonight, excitement or anxiety. And so how does it present? Anxiety can simply be um, when, when someone, whether it's a dog or a woman or a child, it does not matter, that become restless, they're pacing, we're often going to be, associate that with arsenicum album or coffea. If there's itching, we're going to consider now also arsenicum and coffea. If the itching associated with the, and, and ha the person or the animal has anxiety and itching and it's worse at night, it's going to be closer to coffee, so we're getting tighter and tighter and tighter. And the reason that I say this and I know this is because I've studied my Materia Medica through the years. Um, okay, my best friend has panic attacks all her life and has been on Xanax on and off a long time. I now, it now has progressed to other issues. She's very sensitive to stimulants. Yep, skin issues. Rosacea, lichen sclerosis, has very high stress right now. She has high blood pressure and is now taking conventional meds for that. She is late 50s. I feel that it is all related to her gut health. Any advice would be appreciated. Appreciated. Um, I, that's a full case, as you can see. That is an entire case, and particularly when someone's taking drugs, um, it does become a little more in-depth, and you have to have more knowledge. And so that's where my courses go. So should you be interested in, in going further with this and taking the case in, the, in that fashion, Misty, then by all means, um, yeah, it could be gut. But you know what? Those synthetic drugs of commerce, how shall I say, do a number on people. 
And even when they get off of them, there can be boomerang effects after getting off of them, residual effects after. So it does not mean it's hopeless. It just means that's often what we're looking at. So we want to do everything we can to get someone not to go on one of those drugs in the first place and see if we can help them either through, let's say it's their gut, through their gut, gut issues, through, the, through uh, homeopathic medicines, a simpler life, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, a, a, a PTSD, I've written about that on my, on my uh, blog, so Joette Calabrese, PTSD, that could be very helpful for some of you. Mm, bipolar recommendations, we're not going to talk about bipolar tonight, but I do teach that in my mindful course. Again, I just, Joette's Learning Center. You can go to the Mindful course. It's all, everything on psychological issues, emotional issues is right there. Um, okay. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Joe, are you still recommending using the Banerjee protocols from their book? You bet I am. Plus using Materia Medica's. You bet I am. Yes. Make sure that when you use protocols, that you know exactly what it is you're, 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 you're treating. So a lot of times people will say to me something like this. I, I have a thyroid problem. They haven't been tested. They don't know what the values are. They've never had the labs. But they made the association because they've lost some hair, they've gained some weight, and maybe they have some anxiety. So they make the assumption that it indeed is a thyroid problem. So they take the homeopathic medicine specific for thyroid. Uh, there are a number of them, of course but they take one that is a specific protocol for that, and they get worse. Um, and then they get a sensation in their throat. And then they go to the doctor and find out they never had a thyroid problem. It wasn't a thyroid problem. It was something else. It was mucus that was hanging in the back of their throat from allergies, or it was um, polyps from um, having uh, being, been a coach for years and yelling at, at her team uh, and developing polyps. So when we use homeopathic medicine, we have to know that we're using the basis, that we're basing it on the correct condition. Otherwise, we're going to choose the wrong medicine. Garbage in, garbage out. So it's very important that you know if you're going to use a protocol that it be exactly correct. No assumptions, my friends. Not with this. No assumptions. All right, let's see what else do we have. Does the body have to be cleared of the drugs before the remedies work correctly? Um, no, I don't believe that's so. But I have written a, uh, a blog titled Stop It, and it's a suggestion um, on how to open a chronic case, a case with chronic conditions, um, and how to help clear um, conventional drugs or m um, misused supplements or misused even homeopathic medicines. And it's a good way to open a chronic case. So that's right there on my blog. It's called Stop It. <laughs> um, what about anxiety in the form of fatalistic attitude, asks Marissa, or I'll never get better. So that's, a, that's really anxiety re uh, regarding um, health. Um, and, um, and, and then again, uh, the remedy that I would think of, please, let's hear what, what everyone else is going with. My top remedy for something like that. I'm not going to tell you to take this. I am not directing you to take these medicines, my friends. I'm teaching you how to think it through so that you can then read up in a Materia Medica and learn about the medicine so you can determine whether or not it fits the situation. Um, do, do, do you ever no notice that people's dairy sensitivities have higher anxiety? You bet, Donna. <laughs> yeah. Food intolerances, absolutely. Whether it's dairy or it's gluten or it's shrimp, seafood, you bet. Yeah, food does make a difference, and uh, it can often cause. Thank you, Shelly. Um, yeah, thank you, Pamela. Uh, Carenza, arsenicum album. Yes, ma'am. Arsenicum album was the answer to the question. Um, I walk, my dog whines all the time for no reason, and Mark's in my house, despite being house trained and worked uh, with by a professional dog trainer, he whines and paces to, paces, key, paces to go outside constantly. He even had a test for a UTI and it was negative. I feel it's hyperactivity and separation anxiety. I tried Argentum, Ignatia, and Hyoscyamus. 
um, pacing. You want something that has pacing and anxiety with, um, 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 we don't have a rubric for separation anxiety, but uh, fear of being alone, you would find that rubric in the repertory. Marissa, I, find, I think her anxiety is from being left, uh, from me leaving or food, but I've exhausted food intolerances for years of trying. It must be something else. What are your thoughts of using cancer Banerjee protocol along with conventional medicine? Would radio and or chemo, chemo help hurt the homeopathy? Um, I don't teach about cancer. It's a very, it's a hotbed, so I don't, um, I don't go in specifically to teach about that, but I will tell you this that does not matter what the name of the, or the category of the drug is. We use homeopathy in spite of drugs. The, so the person's still taking their medications, they're still working with their conventional doctor, and we indeed use homeopathic medicines. They're on a different plane, so to speak. All righty. If you don't have Orem Arsenicum, then just Arsenicum is second best. So she must be answering something for someone else. Oh, Cassandra, once we went to raw food, to, it helped so much with that. I think we're talking about um, the dog. Classical music, says Marissa, helps the dog. Yes, do Banerjee's along with the conventional, definitely. Yes, thank you very much for making that clear, Jennifer, yes. Um... Replying, okay, replying to each other, it's so good. My 20-year-old college daughter struggles with anxiety and says she feels like her throat is closing. She has taken aconite for sudden panic attacks and ignition for generalized anxiety. It's getting better, but still deals with her, still deals with her throat. Any suggestions? Here's the thing. If you find that a medicine is acting and, ch and someone is improving, I don't know that I would switch around. If, there, if there's improvement, allow the medicine to fully act. I would just stay with it um, over time. And then if the medicine stops acting, you've gotten to a plateau and you can't go any further, now you look at it more clearly and, or excuse me, in, with, a new, with a new set of eyes, so to speak. And now we're looking at it only happens now instead of the way it used to. And that's when we're gonna look at the repertory and look at the sensation that the throat is closing. Um, what has been the most unexpected remedy that happened to work for an anxiety issue that you didn't expect? Yes, I will tell you, one of the ones, and, and this is really, it's right here, it's in the book uh, for anxiety, is Nux Vomica. Nux Vomica can be really great. I had someone call me years ago um, who thought she was having, felt as though she was having a heart attack. She was driving to the hospital on the way to the emergency room because she was certain of it. And she had her kit with her, and she had the, on, was on the phone, and she contacted me and asked, what, what's going on? I think I'm having a heart attack. I said, yes, go to the hospital. Meanwhile, talk to me about what's happened. She said, I don't know, my heart is racing. And she was talking a mile a minute, talking really, really fast. And, <laughs> and um, I asked her if there was anything that she had eaten that day that was out of the ordinary. Well, she uh, confessed, yes, she had eaten a lot of Halloween candy. She had gotten into her kid's candy and had eaten a lot of chocolate. How much chocolate, I asked? A lot, a lot, over a period of hours. Well, that's caffeine. And so my first thought was Nux Vomica, because why? Because there was one other aspect to this case, she felt nauseous. She felt if she could just vomit, she would feel so much better, but she just couldn't. And so because of the, the overeating of a stimulant and the anxiety and the feeling of nausea that is not, was not being quenched, she could not quench it, she could not vomit, that's when I chose Nux Vomica. Now, I know Nux Vomica is a great medicine for anxiety, but it was so specific and it was so clean and so easy for us to determine. So she happened to have her kit with 200 potency of Nux Vomica. She took a dose, parked in the parking lot at the emergency room settled right down immediately, one dose. Now, it doesn't always work this way. I don't want you to get the, an unrealistic idea that how, that how these medicines always act. But in this situation, it acted very quickly because it, was, it was, uh, had just come on. She took that Nux Vomica 200, felt better as she drove into the parking lot, parked her car near the emergency room door, and relaxed and felt infinitely better within a few minutes. She called me back, 
said, thank you, I feel much, much better. That can happen, and it's not illogical for it to happen. So we must be careful, of course, what we eat, what we put into our bodies. What about agoraphobia? Yep, agoraphobia, yeah, that is, that's, uh, argentum nitricum is great for agoraphobia. Uh, all, all of these can be. Aconitum can be for agoraphobia. Um, all right. Fear of unable to protect yourself even though your mind knows there is no imminent danger. I have to tell you, Stormy, that's exactly what panic is, what fear is. It's like, what? I don't, there's nothing wrong. There's this, feels like impending doom. Listen to last week's uh, uh, Monday Night Live. It's right there on YouTube and Facebook, and et cetera, Pinterest, et cetera. Watch it, because I talked about that, how there's this impending doom, like there's something going wrong, but there is nothing wrong. And I discussed that in more, it more in depth. Um, okay, somebody's talking about ambergrassia, which is a good remedy for some of these conditions. Arsenicum, arsenicum. I, you know, I'll tell you, aconite and arsenicum are, are top remedies, generally speaking. But if we start, we use it, doesn't help within a few doses or so, put it aside and start again and relook at it. Uh, would the remedies change the mindset? Some anxiety is a mindset and can be fixed via mindset change. Do remedies help change mindset? No, the, it, the mindset is the, that is the anxiety, is the mindset. Of course it will change the mindset. That is the, that is the problem. We're, we're, you're calling it a mindset, it's really a pathology. What's the pathology? Anxiety. So regardless of whether we call it a mindset or um, something that's been instilled in us, or et cetera, et cetera. It is still, what is it? Is it anxiety? Okay, then we use a medicine for anxiety. That's the way we look at it in homeopathy. All right, my friends, it's 8.32 Eastern time. <laughs> and so tonight, um, I hope that I've helped you with these anxiety, panic, doom, post-traumatic stress disorder, and some ideas so that you can become a little more self-reliant. And, and I hope that I whet your appetite so that you carry on. And I urge you, my friends, to stay curious. <laughs> See you later. God bless you all. Bye now. With our homeopathic protocols, you learn your remedies. My family needs a me, so I must know our remedies how much to take how often to treat and when to stop and when to repeat with our homeopathic protocols you learn your remedies a thousand odary it's elementary with arnica head arsenica beds pajilia slither orms from wither no more my family a needs of me so i improve my memory not only the rems but how often to treat, and when to stop, and when to repeat. With your homeopathic protocols, and learn your remedies. Bella, so red, and arnica head, drosera, bark, ignatia, dark, source of frigid, and cuprum to rigid, and crude itches, cali, caponicum, let it melt on your gum, bovies to weed, are some great ways to treat you. La, 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 homeopathic protocols, and learn your remedies. With our homeopathic protocols, you learn your remedies. My family needs a me, so I must know our remedies. How much to take, how often to treat, and when to stop, and when to repeat. With our homeopathic protocols, you learn your remedies. A thousand odary, it's elementary with arnica head, arsenica beds, pajilia slither, orms from wither, no more. My family a needs of me, so I improve my memory. Not only the REMS, but how often to treat, and when to stop, 
and when to repeat. With your homeopathic protocols and learn your remedies. Bellus O'Red and Arnica Head, Drosera Bark, Ignatia Dark, Source of Bridget and Coopum to Rigid, and Crude Itches, Kelly Cabronicum, let it melt on your gumbo, Beast of Wheat are some great ways to treat you. La 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 la, homeopathic protocols, learn your remedies.